you should be selecting your race day running shoe just as carefully as you would select the right weapon before charging into battle. But what option do you go with? The lightweight economical option or the robust durable option? Make the wrong decision and the outcome could be dire. Well, my advice on this topic has changed multiple times over the years. And I want to show you Run Smarter Scholars the five breakthroughs I've had over the years to help your shoe selection, not only to run faster races, but to get through the necessary training without injury. My journey started seven years ago with the release of this really clever study. The researchers documented the running economy and 3K performance of 18 runners running with different weighted shoes without the runners realizing. How did they do this? Well, the researchers told the runners the aim of the study was to figure out an equation that predicted performance based off their VO2 max and running economy. But this was a lie. Here is what really happened. Each runner repeated their lab test once a week over five weeks. But in between the tests, the researchers secretly added lead beads into the tongue of the shoe and then had also sewn beads into the side panels. So unbeknownst to the runners, over the weeks that had completed their fitness tests with an identical shoe of three different weights, one with no added weight, one with 100 extra grams and another weighing an extra 200 grams. This is the changes to the running economy and the 3K completion times based on the shoe weight. The paper concluded that heavier shoes downgrades your running economy by about 1% per 100 grams added. So if your shoe weighs 250 grams heavier, that's a 2.5% decline, which is massive. This weight might not seem like a lot, but when placed on the very end of a long lever, say a swinging leg, the force required to move it through space is extremely difficult compared to shifting the same weight closer to your center of mass. This is why say 100 grams closer to your hips, like a phone in a pocket or your gel packs on your waist belt, will have nowhere near the amount of energy cost compared to a shoe that's 100 grams heavier. So this was my first breakthrough. Lighter shoes definitely matters when it comes to performance. But before you pick up your lightweight weapon of choice, it's very important to mention that running in flexible lightweight shoes comes at a risk of injury, especially if you're not accustomed to running in them in the first place. You don't want to end up like the runners in this study who ignored the recommended steps when transitioning to barefoot shoes because 12 out of the 14 runners ended up with an injury. So research recommends spending one to two weeks walking and doing strength training exercises only in these minimalist shoes. Then reduce your overall running volume by 10 to 20% and only use these minimalist shoes for a small percentage of your training. Then slowly incorporate more minimalist running over a four to eight week period. This transition process was breakthrough number two. And this is what I recommended for years. If you want to run faster, wear lighter shoes. And I still recommend this in some circumstances, but then everything changed a few years ago with the release of this large systematic review. They factored in the research I mentioned earlier with the secret weighted shoes, alongside 35 other articles, and mentioned that lighter shoes are great, but mainly for shorter distances. But because they lack support, the runner is subject to fatigue earlier and their performance will suffer further into longer events. Not to mention the increased risk of injury if you're running more miles in a more fatigued state. But it seems for longer distances where glycogen depletion and fatigue plays a significant role, shoes with greater midsole properties would have the upper hand. So it's time to bring in the big robust weapon of choice. And when it comes to running shoes, I'm talking of course about the wide range of super shoes out there on the market. The characteristics of a super shoe include a carbon fiber plate, an aggressive heel stack height, a pronounced rocker, and foam technology that returns more energy to the runner. And if you think that a carbon plate works by springing you forward, think again. 
I once thought this until I interviewed Simon Barthold on the Run Smarter podcast, who explained that the plate doesn't act like a spring at all. Instead, it acts more like a lever when making contact with the ground. This is an important breakthrough to help you take better advantage of this shoe. Because if you are a toe runner, you cannot take advantage of the lever effect. Only those who have contact with the heel will have the upper hand. But non-heel strikers shouldn't dismiss the super shoe as an option either. Because Simon also believes that the reason people are running faster in these shoes is because of the unprecedented development of the foam under the foot, which absorbs and returns more energy. And since every shoe brand makes different foam, we are witnessing different super shoes outperforming others. More on that later. But for now, keep in mind breakthrough number four, which is to preference super shoes over the lighter flexible shoes if you are running longer distances, such as a half or a full marathon. But again, you wanna make sure you adapt to these shoes. In fact, an opinion paper that was released a few months ago warned runners of the potential risk of developing stress fractures when wearing these shoes. So make sure you're not only racing in these shoes, but training in them frequently enough that the bones can adapt. After all, you wouldn't pick up a weapon and charge into battle without going through the necessary training first. And these training sessions in your super shoes don't need to be at a fast pace every single time. In fact, doing slower training sessions in these shoes may help facilitate the adaptation process. But this takes me to my fifth and final breakthrough, and that is not all super shoes are equal. And research has shown that different foams will yield different energy return and get you better marathon times. Luckily, this paper did all the heavy lifting and ranked seven different super shoes against a traditional running shoe, and here are the results. The two that showed no improvement were the Hoka One Rocket X, and the Brooks Hyperion Elite 2. The mid-range performers, which increased running economy by less than 1.5%, were the Sacconi Endorphin Pro and the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite. The top performers were the ASICS Metaspeed Sky, showing a 2.5% improvement, and Nike ZoomX Vaporfly Next% Percent 2, with 2.7% improvement. And finally, the best super shoe if you want to run faster marathons is the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent, demonstrating an improvement of a whopping 3%. Okay, so now you can walk to the start line with the right tool for the job. But when the start gun goes off, it can be all for nothing if you are unsure on how to pace the race. In other words, knowing how fast you should run through certain sections of the race in order to squeeze out your best performance. So go check out the winning pacing strategy in this video right here.